welcome back to my channel it's Paula here now this video is gonna be pretty interesting because I am gonna be reading non-fiction books for a whole week I think last year my fiction to non-fiction ratio was 90% to 10% and I read a hundred books so basically out of those hundred books I only read like 10 non-fiction and I want to change that this year I want to start reading more non-fiction books so I asked for some non-fiction books for Christmas this year or last year and my amazing boyfriend definitely pulled through so now I have a big variety of non-fiction books to read this week let's see how many books I can read this week and if I like these non-fiction books today is Monday and I'm gonna start with Words Land by Amanda Montel. I read another book by her. I'm pretty sure that one was published after Words Land came out. I read Coltish last year because one of my co-workers at my previous workplace just um, let me borrow it and I really really liked it. I think anything that surrounds cult is always very fascinating but this book was talking most about like how cults are cult-ish associations, organizations use language to make people be interested and join them so that was very cool um, and I really want to read more about how a language influences society so I'm very very excited to get towards that okay now the blurb is very <laughs> the blurb for this book is very very long it's like all of that uh, I'm not gonna read that but I know that this book is about the English language specifically. So basically it's called Words Lot, A Feminist Guide to Taking Back the English Language. So I think it is going to be kind of like a dissection on the English language and how words that had an original meaning and that were supposed to be gender neutral have developed into words that can be used as slurs or that are more gendered. And personally, my first language is Spanish. I mean, Spanish, pretty much everything is gendered. So from people to objects, we assign a gender to everything. So it's very, very hard to speak about something in a gender neutral way. So I think that's going to be very interesting. Um, and I'm very excited to start it. To this Monday, we'll see how far we can get into this book. I didn't get to read much from Word Slot. I did get through the prologue and part of the first chapter and right now I'm still very very early on. I'm on page 50 about to start the second chapter but I've already underlined so much of this book. It is so so interesting. It's basically what I was expecting it to be. It's just explaining how words started in a way and ended up being detrimental for women and it just explains how a majority part of the slang that English native speakers or English speakers use it's aimed negatively towards women while for men the negative words are way less so yeah it is very very interesting and I'm very much liking it it is going a little bit slow paced but it is very understandable and it only really went into like history of English for like two pages, so not that bad.
so it's the next day. I finally, finally finished Word Slot. It was so good. I have fully annotated it. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, I like this book so, so, so much. I knew it was something that I was very, very interested in when I first picked it up, but I didn't realize how much of it I was actually gonna enjoy and understand and learn. So that is very, very exciting. I have a very, very good opinion of not only this book, but this author too. I think I'm gonna wait a little bit and like think it a little bit more through and give you more of my opinion later in the video. But since I finished Word Slot and we are still on Wednesday, I am gonna pick another book for this little challenge. And I think I am gonna go towards a more biographical book now because that one was very, very learning oriented. So yeah, since that book was very, very knowledge based and like understanding and learning more, I want something that's gonna be a little less brain daunting, something that's not gonna make me think that much, but it's gonna still be nice to read. And I have the perfect book for that. I have a biography. I thought it was a memoir. It is not. I looked it up. It's a biography. So I am gonna start with that. Okay, so the book that I want to start now is Hierba or Grass by Kumsu Jendikim. Once again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's a hard name to pronounce, I guess. But yes, um, this book is, as I learned the other day, not a memoir. It's a biography of E. Oxnum. She was one of the comfort ladies during the Japanese invasion. So I don't think it's going to be a fluffy read. Definitely is going to be quite a heavy um, book, but I really want to read it and see what Kim Su Jenny Kim has to say and how she portrayed everything. Because it's a very, very heavy topic that it's not easy to talk about. So I'm just wondering how she um, portrayed it in such a visual form because it's, it's a graphic novel. So we'll see. Hopefully it's not too triggering. I do have to say this probably has a lot of trigger warnings regarding violence and sexual violence towards women and also war so yeah let's see how it goes This book is gonna be awful. <laughs> okay, not awful, it's just gonna be very. I feel like it might be too much for me. I don't know, right now we've just gone through um, Yoksu's um, childhood and how she ended up being separated from her family, and it just it doesn't, it looks like it's gonna be a really, really hard read. Um, there's also some chapters in between uh, where we get to see Kumsuk Jendikim, so like the illustrator and the writer for this book, we get to see her and how she met um, Eok Soon in Korea. Mm. Okay, I guess um, I'm gonna keep reading, but yeah, I don't have, I'm not very optimistic about this. One thing I do have to say is that all of this is um, obviously paper, but it smells so much like ink like I can smell the ink and I think it may be because there's a lot of parts that have like very big blocks of just black I mean it doesn't smell bad it just it smells a lot okay I'm gonna get reading
Um, I've gotten to page 300. Um, I, I need a break. I'm taking a break. <laughs> okay, so it's been a couple of days. So Wednesday, I kept reading Yerba by Kumsuk Jenji Kim. So I was initially gonna record that, uh, but then I kept breaking down because of this book. I just full on crying, had to like stop and then pick it up again and then stop and then pick it up back again. So that was that was a horrible experience. Um, the book is great. The book itself and the illustrations and everything, it was beautiful, but it was also incredibly sad and incredibly devastating. So yeah, I I finished it on Wednesday. Today is Friday. I couldn't read anything else because I was feeling so sad. It just put me in like a big slump. But I think I'm finally ready to start the third book that I wanted to read for this challenge. And that is, give me a second. And that is Encounter Essays by Milan Kundera. Now, I talked about this book in my book haul from last week. Uh, I just really wanted to read a book by an author that was Slovak um, because my boyfriend is Slovak. I think it would be fun to read something that was originated from the culture that my boyfriend was born in. I do have to say, this author was born before Slovakia was its own country, so he was born in Czechoslovakia. It's very hard to find books by Slovak authors that are translated to English, so this was the best I could do. But yeah, um, I've heard about one of his other books, um, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Um, I have not read that one, but my boyfriend picked this one up in the bookstore, and it's supposed to be a collection of essays uh, regarding art and about art. And I was like, well, I love art. I studied art in college, so maybe this will be interesting. So yeah, I am gonna start. Hopefully it will be interesting. I'm not I'm not looking for anything too emotional after Yedra. I kind of don't wanna feel. So I'm hoping that something that feels more academic will be good for me. So yeah. There is a reason why I try to avoid reading books by certain like white straight male authors. What do you mean? Oh my god, like like let me read this for you. <clears throat> the noise of the water refilling the toilet tank practically never let up, and I suddenly had the urge to rape her. He's talking about an encounter he had with someone where they sat down to talk about something very important and he just... Oh, this is gonna be hard. I know what I'm saying. Rape her, not make love to her. What? Oh. much of encounter essays i'm in page oh 74 i don't have that much of an opinion yet um i did have a strong opinion right at the beginning i read the the painter's brutal gesture on francis bacon 
which is an essay about art, specifically an essay about um, an artist, a painter. That chapter alone reminded me why I don't like reading books written by white male authors. Because why do you have to use that kind of violence to explain a painting or how a painter paints? It just it makes no sense. I hated that he used SA as an example of how this painting made him feel. I just felt like it was completely unnecessary and I, I don't even know why it was there. So my experience with this book started not great. I do think there's a couple of essays here that I enjoy. I especially enjoyed the one um, about 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez because I read that book a couple of years ago and although, again, the sexual violence in that book is not something that I would like to read again. It was a very, very good book. And the essay that Milan Kundera wrote about it was very, very interesting, so I like that. But the thing that I have to say is that most of the people or the art that he talks about in this book, I have not seen, I do not know. So it's hard to read an essay on something that you have no opinion about, that you know nothing about. But yeah, let's see if I can finish this today. update of the video. I ended up finishing Encounter yesterday. I actually got it on my Kindle because sometimes there are just books that you would rather read on your Kindle and that was definitely one of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I ended up reading it during the race yesterday which let me tell you I was very very sad that Sain was not gonna participate in the race because he's um, a Benicitis but Oliver Berman did such an amazing job at Ferrari. The result is always the same, but it's fun to watch regardless. Anyway, that's definitely not why we're here. So let me talk about the books that I read during this video. I read a total of three books, Wesla, Yerba, and Encounter. I definitely wanted to squeeze one more in, but between the little slump that Yerba put me through, and then I had such an amount of things that I had to do for school, it just didn't happen, but that's fine. I'm still very happy with the books that I read. So yeah, let's talk about them. First, I read Wordslat. I think this may be one of my favorite nonfiction books now. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It was so interesting and it was very, very enjoyable. Like sometimes when you're reading texts that are more academic, it can be very, very hard and you have to push through. It did not happen at all with this book. Amanda Montel has the ability to explain things in a way that is highly entertaining and very, very easy to understand. It happened with Coltish and with Wordslat. So yeah, um, I liked it so much, I annotated the crap out of it. This book is divided into 10 chapters, I think, and I enjoyed... Into 10 chapters? And I enjoyed every single chapter, like everything was so interesting to read about. There are stuff that I already knew, some stuff that I learned, and some stuff that I didn't think about but I completely agree with. There are definitely some chapters that stood out. There was one chapter about catcalling and how it's... I mean, we all know, it's never about compliments, it's always about the power, but Amanda Montel explains it so well in this book. I would highly recommend at least reading that chapter. And then there's also one chapter that talks about this concept called the dual bind which is basically that when you're a woman in like some kind of power, in some kind of like public setting, you can only be one of two things, which is very attractive, very likable, but not taken seriously, or you can be taken seriously, but not being likable, not being attractive. So that chapter was very interesting to read because as a woman in power, you're always worrying about whether people take you seriously, whether people find you likable and it's always like, oh, well, I want to make myself clear on something but I don't want people to take me as unlikable or as frigid. I believe it's something that every woman has encountered at some point and once again, Amanda Montel explains it very, very well and she gives very good examples. 
One thing I have to say too is that when you're reading feminist texts, feminist books by white authors, there is always a chance that the book is not going to be completely inclusive. But I feel like Amanda Mattel did a good job of including and giving credit to black and queer communities and how the way that they talk have influenced so much our current slang and our current vocabulary. So that's definitely something that I am incredibly happy that she put in. But yeah, so that was very, very interesting. I really like this book. It's one of my favorite now. No, afterwards, that I read. Yereva. Yerba is a graphic novel that describes the life of Eok Soon, which is a Korean woman that lived through the Japanese invasion and during a part of her life she was a comfort lady for the Japanese soldiers. So obviously this is a very very hard book to read and I would recommend you see the trigger warnings because as of right now I can think of like violence, sexual violence, abuse, abandonment, war, death. There is so so much here that could be triggering for you so please check it before trying to go into this but these kind of books are so so important to read obviously i'm european so regarding our history classes in high school and school they all focused on europe specifically um west europe so i didn't know much about the japanese invasion a couple of years ago i actually went to korea on a semester abroad kind of thing for university so I stayed there for like five months and honestly I really really loved Korea it was a great place to be in temporarily and the art culture and traditions there quite beautiful and I actually got the chance to learn a lot about their history including the Japanese invasion but yeah this book is just it's just it's heartbreaking I don't think there's any other word to describe it I feel like it's heartbreaking and powerful at the same time because the illustrator did such a good job of putting impact in these pages and it's just it's so sad there's like this part right at the end when um Eok Soon she just confesses to never having been happy in her whole life and it broke my heart so so much it was so sad there's also like a little letter of the illustrator um in the end of it and um she basically explains how Eok Soon she used to go to the this government building to protest every Wednesday because she wanted some retribution for all of the pain that she had to go through because of the Japanese invasion. And I googled her afterwards and I found out that she actually passed in the beginning of last year. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. I just remember in 2021, which is when I went to Korea, I spent five months and honestly, there were such happy moments of my life and at the same time, this woman, Eok Soon, was going every week to protest to get retribution for something so horribly done to her. I don't know, it gives you a lot to think about. And it makes you just be so thankful for everything that you have, for all the people that you have. So yeah, a very, very hard read, but a very recommended one. I think everyone should read this book, even though it will destroy your heart and your soul and everything. Now, as I said, that book put me in a little bit of a slump this week. Um, I didn't read for like two days. And I was like, okay, let's pick something that is not going to make me completely sob. So I started reading Encounter by Milan Kundera. This is a collection of essays about art, regarding art. I feel strongly that this book was not for me. I feel like I cannot resonate with Milan Kundera. I just cannot resonate with him and the way that he describes Art is just not one that I would use. I feel like especially because a lot of the things that he talked about, I do not know, I've never seen, I've never heard of. So reading about his opinion on something that I don't know, it's just, it doesn't make for a lot of like debate in my head. I feel like if I wanted to read an essay on art, it's either to support something that I already believe or to see someone else's perspective or how it made someone else feel. You cannot do that when you have no original opinion about something. Also, I feel like we saw that right at the beginning, the first chapter, there was something out there that I was like, no, <laughs> no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna read about this. Not everything was bad though. There were some chapters that I really liked. I have them here. So there's The Novel and Procreation, which is an essay based on Gabriel Garcia Marquez's um, 100 Years of Solitude, 
which is a book that I've read and I actually did very much like this essay and what his opinion was on it and then there's also this essay called Exile as Liberation according to Vera Linhartova the way that exile is described and experienced through this essay I thought it was very very interesting and I really liked it and just like in general how this man talks about his exile is something that I did enjoy reading just because it's something that I've obviously never experienced and see what he has to say about that it's always gonna be interesting and then the last one that I thought was very good too was No Celebration a text published in 1995 together with other pieces celebrating the 100th anniversary of the birth of cinema so this essay is about the differentiation of film as art and film as entertainment or film as an agent of stupidity which is how he calls it and I thought this, this one was also quite interesting because I studied animation which is a form of audiovisual art slash entertainment I think those three essays were the ones that stood out to me more and the rest I just I feel like I couldn't understand or relate to them so unfortunately I feel like this book just in general wasn't for me yeah so these are all of the books that I read this week I am very excited because I definitely want to keep reading more nonfiction because I feel like my bookshelf and all of the books that I read rely a lot on fiction so yeah it's always good learning new things and I feel like these type of books definitely help me with that there is definitely more non-fiction books that I want to read so if you want me to do another video like this please let me know I definitely want to get to a starting point the second one um, which is a Hayao Miyazaki memoir I'm very very excited for those but yeah please let me know if you like this video and if you ever want me to make any more I hope you had a great day and see you in the next one bye <laughs>